season is right about on the corner. I'm just back from Scotland and uh, I welcome you to this our 39th film in our series pattern of the month and uh, today maybe a bit influenced by Norway starting um, we're gonna do a samurai and uh, those of you who've been following know that old samurai started out as a black long wing and uh, the idea uh, was to have a slimmer fly a fast swimmer one you fish on a belly mended or even strip it but um, now i have uh, last few years starting to use the samurai technique and the samurai profile on flies with the, the main wing being uh, something else than black. Most of the samurai I've been fishing has a white under wing and a black wing on top. Today we're gonna do a fairly new fly for me actually, a gray and green samurai. It's a fly where the main wing is gray and it's meant to uh, melt in or to be very discreet in clear water. Um, some of the Norwegian rivers, starting in a couple of days, uh, will have, or actually starting the same day we released this film, isn't that right? It's Thursday, it's uh, the 1st of June. Uh, but some of these Norwegian rivers, uh, even if it's early season, they go totally clear and I would say uh, you get the temperature up a bit a grey and green samurai will be a really good choice for you so check this out and I hope uh, that you will enjoy tying and also like the pattern of course and catch a lot of fish on that so uh, I've been sitting here many films talking about all this uh, what we think cool things that are going to come and um, some are here and some we've been waiting for a very long time but uh, the cutter is one and uh, I think last film I mentioned our toolkit that was right around the corner now the toolkit is here and if you uh, like it and if you like to have a little cool collection of uh, what we think is uh, super good tying tools everything you will need to tie good salmon plies you can uh, <clears throat> you can get this on our web now and uh, what I hope is uh, shortly perhaps when this is out or just um, a few days after we will also sell the empty uh, little leather wallet for the tools um, we had quite a few mails from people saying that I bought all the tools do I need to buy them all over again and of course you don't need to do that okay so we start today I will use uh, uh, extra small fluorescent green fits and a medium glow one and the glow one is it's a very special uh, color on the tube because it actually has got phosphor in it meaning that when the light fades away uh, it will uh, glow in the dark and I use it for flies I fish in the dark but also use it for really light flies that uh, will uh, that I want to to fish in super clear water and I will start now by doing a slightly longer 
medium uh, and uh, the reason for that is that the long wing on the Samurai I don't want to have the hook too much in front I want to still have the hook in the middle of the fly and I do that medium and I will do a piece of extra small and uh, put it on and those of you following know that the way I connect the two is by a little thread over the part that uh, uh, with the connection between the two that I cut in an angle so the medium will hold it. I actually think uh, since Lude and uh, my son and others been telling me don't show and use stuff that that we don't, we don't have. I think it's the first film I use our little bobbin that we finally also now have in stock. Uh, maybe a word on this because it's smaller than most bobbins and the reason for this is that I'd like to have the bobbin in my hand to control the thread and the spool of thread but I also like to have close to the thread so I can steer things here at the end of the ceramic pipe and uh, that's why it's not longer so i get it out here and sometimes i hold here but i also put it in and slide up my finger so that's why it looks like it is and uh, the reason you've been waiting is that we've been struggling with a ceramic pipe but now we have actually japanese ceramic pipes that are the best in the world so we solved the problem with a few percentage of the bobbins breaking the thread. These ones don't. So, a little thread there and then I back down the thread to uh, uh, about two thirds. So you can see this is a longer tube than I normally use. And I will do a mirage uh, uh, pack here. And when I use Mirage on a fly like this, uh, I could uh, use uh, one of our stealth threads or white threads and I can back it down. But since I have a darker dubbing here, I prefer to use this. And I start far away from the end of the tube and I back down the Mirage and double it back. You want to have it super strong. You can also put a little bit of uh, uh, glue on the tube. So you glue the mirage onto the tubing. I don't like glue because glue makes it hard and makes it brittle and make the fly don't be as strong as, as others. Other, other, uh, if it, without the glue, it's stronger, sorry. Uh, okay, so a little bit of braids and with a fly like the gray and green, uh, I could use different kinds here. I can make a fly that really disappears by using more of the, of the diamond pearl and uh, also use dubbing diamond pearl or silver, but here uh, since I fish and since I like flies with quite a bit of green, I'm going to use now the Greenlander green dubbing, which is, uh, sorry, the Greenlander green um, hollow braid, which is quite strongly green, and I tie it in underneath. And uh, on a fly like this, where I'm not going to back down this, I'm not going to use uh, any body hackle. I only tie in one. And I overlap and tie this in. So I get a little more than half of what I had left before I tie this in. There we go.
cut it and when you cut don't cut too close it's better it it can slip a little bit if you get angry fish that will pull this with your teeth a few more turns and even though i'm using thin materials uh, you can see that how this actually tapers it, it's the the tubing is the thinnest part and then the mirage and the uh, braid and now i'm gonna put dubbing on and i thought i had a few other colors here yes i can do this with either the uh, green under green or i can do it with the um, uh, gaudy green gaudy green makes it a little darker and um, i'm gonna do it this time with the greenlander green i think we have the gaudy green in our packs isn't that right linda i believe so but uh let's do it a little different it's going to be a brighter fly using this and um, i take a little bit at the time don't put on too much a little bit dab it on spin it on the thread and since it's a really long fiber dubbing it's easy to to uh, dub back down over where the thread is is tied in and uh, grow this a little more dubbing the closer to the head you get so you keep the good taper back and forth a little bit and what's unique with the or unique what is special maybe i should say with the samurai design is that i don't go all the way to the front um, put that there before i put the wing on because uh, on all samurais i use dubbing to create that uh, good drop formed profile so what i do here i dub this and you can see how the long fibers already sticking out i use a little brush that's of course it's in the toolkit too brush it down brush it out i usually say it's the meanest brush on the market it really picks up your fibers and then i take this and i i feel this normally there's one or two like this that are a bit too long maybe I can cut that afterwards, but I can also taper it when it's sitting on the fly like this. Um, okay, so time for the wing. Summarize, I have very little flush. I let the flushy part be the dubbing. And uh, I'm gonna use, um, actually gonna use a sheep's hair today and uh, this is one of the pieces that comes in our pack and i must say that it's a fantastic material it has got good tips and a very nice tapering and is absolutely ideal for this kind of fly i cut it off take my brush untangle you can see it's quite tangled all hair is tangled before you really just pull it through the brush like this and you can see how very nice translucent this gets and also how the hair gets a very good tapering with few long fibers uh, I'm super happy with this hair actually okay so you can see it's going to be quite slim wing. I'm not tying it in too wide like this that I normally do where I pull it down on the sides. I put this together, put the wing more on top of the fly than I do on most of my other flies. And uh, tie it in. Make sure to back down the thread where I have the dubbing so I don't get um, any part that is uh, where the, the thread is seen it's actually the, probably the biggest mistake you do when making flies that that's not durable that is that the 
the fish will get in contact somewhere with the thread and it only needs to be a little small to kill the fly that way. You see how nice it is? How very thin here? Which is just what I want. I'm gonna put in a couple of angel hairs in this wing and uh, it's just to get a little flush in the wing. I'm not gonna use many strands. I use a few. And I tie them in the same way I do with all angel hairs. I just separate them a little bit and uh, tie in with one or two or three strands and then double back. Then I take this and I hold it, feel it, and I cut the longest strands. This is also something I can do easy afterwards. Uh, one, one there. Um, the reason I don't want the angel hair to be uh, too long is that it tangles with the hook and it's, it's terrible, angel hair. This stuff, you find it anywhere. Uh, but um, tie all the flies will be in your shower when you shower it later. Okay, so there we are. Now I'm gonna just put a little back on this and I'm gonna do it with, with a had a piece of black hair here somewhere. Can use almost monkey hair or I can use the same kind of hair uh, that uh, the gray is too if I want to. I take very few strands. Take away what's the shorter ones and I just make sure I put this in as a little roof uh, on top. And I want these black ones to be slightly longer than the gray ones and tie them in and you will see how this adds a little bit uh, of volume also to the fly so you have to think when you tie in the gray so you don't use too much samurai should be slim the design is made to be slim uh, and uh, if you put in too much hair or make the profile too short, you actually doing something else than the samurai. Okay, so here we are, the wing is ready. I'm not gonna tie in two jungle cocks. On a fly like this, if I have the choice, I go on a fairly light colored cape. Normally I prefer the darker ones, but, but here, I will uh, I will choose a light one and um, I try to say it every film my little sight is here uh, that I always carry uh, because uh, it's illegal to uh, fly with flies or capes without uh, the sightus Okay, forming it so it curves this way, but also curves a little that the other way and I form it over my thumbnail. Uh, and um, had people say to me, all oh, your jungle cocks are perfect, but they're not perfect from when you start with them. It's about trying to form them mechanically so they also stay the shape when you, when you fish your fly. Tie this in and since uh, my body is a little bit longer, the jungle cock will not reach all the way back to, trying to find this here, to the end of the plastic. To get the good proportions, I always start with the, my, the, the side nearest to me and then I prepare the other one and just tie it in so it's got the same length and it will uh, sit 
on the side of the black and uh, give us a little side on classic flies jungle cocks are used for cheeks the shorter ones but also for what you would call sides where you have a longer feather with uh, a cheek on top normally cheeks in classic flight times uh, chatterers we're not going to use something like that but we're going to have this form along the wing like that making sure that all the proportions are right more dubbing and what i can do if i want is that i can go with two different colors here I, and if you're going to use two colors some of these i use maybe um, a pearl one and go with the greenlander in front or i go with the greenlander and i go with the gordy green in front this time i'm going to stick to the to the greenlander one and keep on doing this but it's a nice way of making the fly have a darker front which is normally what i like i like most of my flies to have a lighter part underneath darker on top lighter in the back and darker in the front simply because that's how everything that lives in a moving water in a stream or river is shaped so i put this on and um, you now need to be a bit brutal you need to overdo it if you don't and you start brushing you will brush this out the way that the fly will look too skinny and you don't have that um, tapering that i really want pull back the last turns close because if i if i take the same amount here uh, the fly will be will not have a tapering but if i take a little bit more brush it out you can see how the brush it really picks up these fibers and uh, i cover up the jungle cocks normally and uh, just brush this out and they will create of course a lot of sparkle but they will also create a fly that is very very translucent you can see how this now is built up with the tapered body like that uh, tapered part of the dubbing which i think is what i want okay so first doing sunrise i fished some of them like this no huckles no nothing just a bit of flash just letting the the dubbing be uh, what creates the uh, the good uh, profile and uh, tapering but you don't get any motion and it's not as important on a fly like this that you are meant to be fished super super fast but still i think it adds to the fly and how it fishes by uh, putting in a couple of hackles and i'm going to use a pheasant pheasant rump feather it's uh dyed chartreuse green but it's not bleached so it's got a lot of uh it looks more alive i think when you get a little bit of of uh, uh, markings on the feather and i pull it out i'm not going to use a lot preferably enough creating the triangle to do two or maximum three turns of uh, here you go maximum three turns on uh, the fly and i take this i can 
of course now take our hack of prime but when you have a feather with like this where you have a long part to hold i think it's almost easier to just do this by hand and i double by holding the fibers back that i tie in putting the turns in front of each other and uh, doing this i get fibers that are naturally pointing the right way they're formed to follow the fly like this and um, does it really matter i don't know i don't think so to be honest with you i uh, was fortunate to fish with Lee Wolf. I told you this before. He turned all the hackles the other way. He thought that that would help him create more motion to the fly, which is a really interesting thoughts, thought. But um, for me doing this, ending with the turbo, I will create the turbulence and I will get what I think a nicer looking fly that will fish equally good. Then I'm going to put on a little bit of uh, soft tackle and you know how soft tackles are, they uh, collapse in uh, almost the slowest little current without the turbo saying, put the turbo on, they can't collapse, but it's also another thing with soft tackles, they look absolutely uh, too fluffy and too big when they are dry but ending up with this fishing this fly will be totally different and it's like I do with all materials I really don't care about how the fly looks like from here and when it's dry in the, in the vice what's important is what's happening when you put it in the water and also it's crazy to look at the fly from this perspective when the fish would see it from down here but I mentioned that before I'm gonna do the same with this now just take it three fingers let the tube slide in and double this little soft tackle and it's not very important that the soft tackle du doubles in a good way because it's so soft again the fly will look a little bit nicer when dry and uh, but when it comes in the water it doesn't matter at all or perhaps you're like me, you want to open the box and have a look and they should look really, really good. Then it's more fun to tie them on. Okay, you see how this will add a bit of, of motion to the fly and it will add to the profile. I think this looks very good. Trying to keep the proportions on the hackle where I have a rump feather with long fibers and a shorter um, soft hackle in front. Normally when you tie hackles, you have the longest hackle uh, in front where the hackles taper. But uh, here I do it differently and I do differently when I have a soft hackle in front of, of a little stiffer hackle. Okay, so now it comes to uh, ending this and uh, uh, maybe it's because I was the guy that started using cones on tubes so long ago but, but uh, maybe that's why I have hard to understand why you should end up a fly with a thread head because the thread is the most a vulnerable part of the fly and it doesn't matter how much uh, varnish or glue and whatever you put on uh, the cone will always be stronger and if you don't wanna uh, if you don't wanna put on a 
big cone that will add, see what I have here, I had few of the right colors. You can do the micro one. The micro cone will create a slimmer fly. If I go up, see, can slide those, both of them on here. If I go up to the next diameter, I will have a fly that can't slim down as much. And here, I can do the big one too. Uh, here I actually decide what profile I want to have on the fly. If I will do what we call a small one, it's maybe crazy to have the biggest called small, but that's difficult. You never put on several cones on one here. But here you can see the difference how, uh, how uh, the, the profile of the fly is decided what obstacle you put in front for the current to to uh, divide the, for the water to divide around and create turbulence. And um, I actually think that on, uh, or you can say it like this, too. I give you a little facts too, is that the turbulence you get here is 10 times the diameter you put on. So if I'll do like here, eight millimeters, I will ha have an eight centimeter long turbulent stream. And this is the whole idea behind the, uh, the turbo cones. And this is also one of the reasons that we cut down on sizes, uh, because I found out by testing in my flight tester that you don't need to have all of the fly inside the turbulent stream to make a fly that will swim in a good way. It's like where the current come together like this and meet, that point is never going to be stable. That point is going to move, meaning the part, the thin part, the thin wing behind the turbulent stream will swim by this point moving. So if I'll do this and I'll have the current come together here, I will have this part moving behind the turbulent profile of the fly and it's very easy to see this if you have it in mind you you don't need a fly tester you can just take your fly hold it in the water and you will see how this works so what a lot of talk about cones but this is important i think to create a fly that will swim the best way and uh, i decide on this since it's the beginning of the season and you want to have a little meteor fly, I will not do the micro here. I would do the micro if I go down in size, but uh, I will do the extra small on this. And I take a little glue. Here I need glue. Use support by my finger. Put a little glue away here right on the thread. See, so I get enough. Take a little more. This is almost done, this little bottle. It's been flying around with me. Okay, so like that, I take my fingers, pull back the hackles, take this, pick up the glue. And if I have some glue there, I'll just turn the cone when I push it down to divide the glue around the tube not too much so it will be sucked up in the hackle and will destroy the fly okay take it out of the vise be sure that you pull it down and uh, I use support take my finger put the scissors do like about three millimeters cut it got a bit of black so I can use a black lighter right and hold it up and melt it down. If I hold it up, I get a good hold for my leader. If not, it's easy to just 
use the point of a hook to open it up, but it should open up in a good way like this one did. I think it turned out to be a good fly. You can see how uh, it's uh, fairly translucent though and how the wing is put right on the top and uh, with a little black there and an extremely long longest strands are over there right long thin wing the hackles will create uh, the right profile and um, I actually think it turned out so good so I might even fish it <laughs> uh, yes I am uh, okay so the gray and green samurai and you uh, see the thoughts the slimmer fly and uh, fast swimmer and I hope you uh, enjoyed the time and maybe picked up a trick or two or at least got some of my crazy thoughts on uh, why this fly should be tied like it is uh, I prefer to fish it this on a clear river and you can fish a fly that is this big you see the hair is over there so it's a big fly uh, even on warmer water and and further into the season but then you need to fish it really fast cast across get your rod tip down get the belly let it swing around in front of the fish and uh, maybe Okay, hope you liked it. Uh, in a month's time we will be back with another fly. We are then into the middle of the um, season and I always say um, we're gonna tie something different, totally different and uh, next time it's gonna be very very different. Okay, thank you for watching. I almost forgot to say that, of course, oh God, we got it here. Of course, you can get our packs and uh, I think we have the new pretty cool uh, design on the sticker there. And either you buy the fly packs like this uh, or you can buy the fly tying packs where you get um, materials to tie, 10 of those. Uh, and um, thank you guys for su subscribing we have many subscribers from all over the world that subscribe for the pack so okay green green fish it fast and stay strong and tie on thank you for watching